Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing great and I hope that your exam prep or your revisions are going well. Um, thank you to everyone who has submitted, not submitted, supported the purchase of the workbook and was left really good reviews on Gumroad. If you don't have the workbook, the price is just five pounds and I think that's about six dollars. Um, you can head on to Gumroad and get it um, and you can come back here to sort of look at the solutions because what I'm doing is just uploading the solutions as videos so that you can refer to them um, on the channel if you need to so yeah welcome back everyone just a little update from my end um, as much as I enjoy supporting the channel I have become really really busy so my videos will be quite infrequent and I think I've mentioned this before but what I do want to stress is that if you have a specific question that you have come across in the past paper and it is really difficult you can ask for a video on that question and when I say a question I mean a specific question so you can't just say oh can you do the entirety of paper four because I'm pretty sure you know from all the past videos that that takes up to two hours so I won't have the energy like I don't have the capacity to do that but what I can do is address specific questions that might be tricky or complicated um, that you might be struggling with okay so this video is just for chapter five of the workbook and i hope that you find it useful obviously as you might have noticed chapter five is very easy very direct it's about mitosis chapter six is also very well it's quite easy and direct but i think it gets a little bit complicated towards the end so i will do a video on that as well okay so here for chapter five the first question i asked you in the workbook is to identify what each of these faces in interphase main so when you are looking at the cell cycle you have the G1 phase, the S phase, and the G2 phase, and these three phases are often referred to as interphase. Um, so what happens in each phase um, for G1 is cell growth, where basically the cell grows and it would synthesize the proteins that it needs in order to like do um, DNA um, replication and things like that. Um, and then the S phase, just always think S for synthesis, is where the DNA, new DNA is synthesized. So it's a replication stage. Um, so if you say DNA replication happens in this phase, you would also be correct. The G2 phase, um, that's the phase where the cell starts to prepare for mitosis. Um, and then M phase just basically means mitosis is happening. So when it comes to um, mitosis in general, students tend to struggle with it because um, they're always like, how should I study for mitosis? And I always say the best way to study for mitosis is to memorize the different stages because there isn't really another way to, to, to study for it. But beyond that, what I think is a good clue is to also learn what the diagrams look like at each stage. So you know that at metaphase, metaphase is the one I often use as my point of um, direction, I, especially if the sequence, um, if the process is presented to me in sequence, I know that when it's at metaphase, the um, chromosomes are aligned at the equator, so they're in the middle of the cell, okay, and this can be either horizontally, um, they can be aligned that way or it can be vertical, okay? Um, and then I know that at anaphase, the chromosomes are split in half, so I always remember that. And then I know that at cytokinesis, which is this stage here, there are two daughter cells that have been formed. And so what I'm often left with is to determine which one is prophase and which one is telophase. So telophase, you can see that the cells, are, the chromosomes rather are decondensing, which means they are becoming less visible. While in prophase, you're likely to see the chromosomes becoming more visible. So that is a way that I approach it. And perhaps that would be helpful for you too, as you study for this. Um, so with prophase, I mean, it's pretty direct. The DNA starts off as chromatin and then it becomes um, it becomes chromosome, like it thickens and then becomes chromosome and becomes more visible. Um, the nuclear membrane will disappear, the nucleolus will disappear. It's basically the cell shedding all of the things that it would not need during mitosis um, in order for mitosis to, pro um, to progress. Then you have the metaphase stage where the chromosomes will align at the equator, as I said. The centrioles will reach the opposite poles, and obviously this is important. And spindle fibers will attach to the centromeres of the chromosome. So always remember that the chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids. Um, I tend to draw them this way. You can think of them as like drawing bunny ears. Um, but instead of a bunny that has two ears, you're drawing one that has just a face and four ears. That's a good way to think about it. And this is 
well, probably not a good way to think about it because now I just figured that that's a scary image. Um, but this point over here, the points that I'm darkening right now, is called the centromere. So during metaphase, when the chromosomes are aligned at the center, there are these tiny threads that come from the um, from the centrioles at the poles, and those tiny threads will attach themselves to the themselves to the centromere. At the anaphase stage, the spindle fibers on both sides, so if you can just follow what I'm doing on the diagram side, you can see I'm drawing some red dots there. So those red dots are like the spindle fibers, or I can just make them into thicker lines so that it's easy for you to see. So they're coming right from the poles. In this case, because the cells are arranged vertically, it means that the poles are at these ends here, all right? Um, they're coming right from the poles, and then they pull on the centromeres during anaphase. So when they pull on the centromeres, they pull in a way that causes the, the chromosomes to split into halves. So you would have a half in of the chromosomes um, that happens somewhere here. And this half would migrate to one pole and the other half would migrate to the other pole. Okay. And then you have telophase um, that happens right after. And obviously with telophase, everything that happened in prophase starts to reverse itself. So in telophase, there are new chromosomes that form at the poles. The nuclear membrane will disappear. The nucleus will disappear. But one thing else that you should add here that I realize now that I didn't add is that the chromosomes um, start to become chromatin. They start to become loosely formed chromatin. So this is how you write chromatin for those who might be wondering. And I already have um, a very extensively explained video on this on the channel. So please just go to um, what you call it now to the playlist tab. If you click on playlist, you will see that I have grouped everything for you in terms of like chapter, in terms of like solutions to past questions, um, help for practicals, all of those things. So everything you need is on the channel. Um, the last phase here is cytokinesis. And sometimes they often say cytokinesis is not necessarily part of mitosis. So you might see it as a separate stage. But in the case that you're presented with the image that looks like this, know that when you have two daughter cells forming at the end of the process, that is cytokinesis. And it is simply the cells splitting into two to form two identical cells. Okay. Um, for some reason, my thing is stuck. I don't know why my computer is stuck. Okay. Um, I have one more slide, and for some reason, I can't get to that slide because my computer has just decided to freeze. Um, but on that slide, I can remember what the questions are. It says, why are telomeres important? Um, so telomeres are important. Just think of them as protective elements for the ends of the chromosomes. And they also allow for the attachment of enzymes to the ends of the chromosomes. And the second question is, what is the difference between a malignant tumor and a benign tumor? A malignant tumor is one that is not cancerous. So um, I'm just going to write it down here since I can't move my slide for some reason. Um, I'm just going to write here malignant. So that word. This is the one that is not. Um, sorry, this is the cancerous one. Okay, this is the cancerous one. Um, and this is the, um, the type of tumor that would invade the cells. It grows very fast and is cancerous. The other word is benign. So a benign tumor, I'm just going to write that somewhere at the bottom here. I'm really sorry. I did not expect that my computer would do this. And it's a new computer, by the way. So maybe I just haven't gotten around learning how to use it properly. Um, but I promise you, it works perfectly for everything else. Um, so a benign tumor is one that is not cancerous and doesn't invade the cells. So those are the two last questions that are left. And if you have the workbook, you can confirm that those are the only questions left for um, chapter five. So yeah, that's it that I have for you for chapter five solutions. I will upload chapter 6.1 very soon. And yes, good luck and keep preparing and studying hard. All the best. Goodbye.